Hey guys, welcome back to a Q&A session coming to you from Orlando, Florida today, about to play a few gigs at Epcot uh, in, in Disney World. And I uh, just thought I'd take a few minutes. I just got about, oh, 15 minutes or so to answer a few questions. So uh, I'll jump right in and try to get to some of these YouTube questions. So if you, as always, if you have questions, make sure you're leaving them in the comments section below so we can get to them uh, as, as we go. So here's a question on the uh, Practicing Tough Chord Changes. A video from Sam Yoder he asks uh, he says he says good advice great record and awesome tune thanks for that Sam appreciate that uh, that's here and now the latest record came out in February 2017 he, he says I've been shedding lazy bird and doing exercises similar to this uh, you can watch that practicing tough chord changes video uh, to see the exercise that we're talking about for me, connecting the dots like that in high registers can be tricky. Do you ever try to outline changes and restrict yourself to only playing in a certain range? Keep up the awesome music and videos. Oh, well, I'm trying to do that, so I will keep trying. Thanks, Sam. Um, but yes, I think uh, using restrictions in order to practice something is super important. In terms of playing in the upper register, I think you just have to give generally free and flexible in that register to be able to improvise in that register. Um, if you can't play melodies in that register, you're never going to be able to improvise freely in that register. So I would start with playing long note melodies, you know, in upper register like ballads, and then kind of maybe is if you can take bebop tunes through the keys and move them up chromatically or move them up in whole steps until you get into the range where it's a little bit challenging. Um, one that I used to do in the upper register, I used to play joy spring in like an octave up from where most trombone players would play it so just like at pitch with clifford brown or as close to as pitch as you can um, i used to practice that when i was in college i remember doing it at a studio class once being super nervous to play it in front of everybody but um, it was well worth the challenge so don't be afraid to challenge yourself and try to find some ways to practice written material in the upper register so that you're able to actually improvise in the upper register so thanks for that question sam Here's a great question. Um, this is from Andrew Jackson on the how to play in the upper register on trombone jazz ballads video. Um, Andrew says, hey Nick, I appreciate your videos. Thanks Andrew, glad you can watch them. I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on connecting your high and low registers without shifting the embouchure. Well, uh, I think that that's something growing up in Rochester, going to the Eastman School of Music and having that really strong trombone tradition. And I hearken back to that teaching a lot, going back to my early teachers, going back to thinking about just playing the trombone uh, and learning and learning about embouchure and just creating great sound and all of that. Um, that's something that was kind of instilled in me from an early age of trying to create a, you know, a good embouchure. But that being said, I do think there's kind of some natural shifting. Your airstream kind of shifts as you go into the upper register and into the lower register. For me, the horn tilts down and my my airstream might go up slightly to get into the upper register and my air and the kind of the opposite for the low register and pedal register uh, practicing with a mirror trying to you know make sure that things don't shift too much when i started trying to practice scales and patterns and stuff uh, two octaves instead of one octave and then expanding from two octaves to the range of the instrument is something that really helped so it was always kind of going back and forth um, there's some different exercises I've borrowed from some people. Somebody who has really great uh, thoughts about connecting the pedal register and upper register would be Marshall Jilks, if you guys don't know Marshall. Uh, he teaches at the Berkeley College in Boston, and he plays in lots of great bands, played in the WDR big band for a long time. If you don't know his playing, uh, you should. So make sure you check out Marshall. And he's got a great uh, lesson video on Michael Davis's channel, uh, his Hip Bone Music channel. Um, his website, he has a lot of educational videos over there and has some great thoughts there about connecting the pedal register to the upper register. So if you want to do that, I that's where I would send you uh, at this moment because I don't have anything readily available uh, to mention about that. But uh, back to my kind of approach in general is just to make it easy. You know, it shouldn't be hard. You know, trombone playing isn't rocket science. Uh, you know, try to shift as little as possible. You know, if you look in the mirror and you're going crazy shifting all over the place, it's not the most efficient use of your muscles, not the most efficient use of your air. Uh, so I would take the time to uh, try and address that in that way. But um, yeah, maybe that's a topic for a more in-depth video at some other point. So thanks for the question, Andrew. 
Pablito Miguel asks, I don't recall which video this is on, but um, he says, you're sounding better than ever. Thanks, Pablito, appreciate that. Are you, did you switch to a larger horn? Is that a 3B or a modern 4B? Uh, yeah, and I just was talking about that. I switched in, fall, in about 2014 to a large, larger, little, a slightly larger bore 525 because my sound concept had developed. It had changed a little bit since when I got a 508 Edwards a couple years before I got that in 2009 when I graduated from college. It was kind of a graduation present and I still have it and it's great, but uh, it was time for a change. Uh, because my sound concept changed and so that's why I moved on to a larger horn to get a darker sound bigger sound and uh, that's what I'm still working on now so um, well I, I gotta run uh, time to uh, go to sound check um, but I'm always glad to see these questions and I'll continue to try to answer them so I uh, hope some of the info in this video has been useful leave your questions below so we can continue this conversation I really appreciate you guys watching and uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not already and uh, Always feel free to share with any other trombone players you think might find this stuff interesting because I know uh, I do and I watch a lot of other people's stuff and try to glean what I can from that and kind of combine it into my own practice. So have a great week, guys, and I'll see you back here real soon.